Minnesota is home to more than a half million immigrants. Census data shows most of them came here from Mexico and Somalia. More recently, though, we are seeing hundreds of people from Ecuador. Many of them are kids making their way through our schools. In Columbia Heights, English learners now make up 44% of the student population. That is an 8% jump from last school year. WCCO's Kirsten Mitchell shows us how those kids and their parents are being welcomed with open arms. The flower of floor. Eight-year-old Henry is eager to learn. Is this word, everyone. Flower. flower. But learning in a language that's not his own. And Dodonda Eris, where are you from? I'm from Ecuador. Is tough. It's difficult to speak English for me. Henry moved to the U.S. with his mom and brother and started at Valley View Elementary School this year. How do you feel about being in Minnesota? Entendiste? I'm good. He's great. Um, picking up English fast, very eager to speak. Patrick Schultz is one of five English learner teachers serving the entire school. I've talked to many parents. Most of the reasons people are coming is because they want a better life for their children. And they work really hard to make that happen. There's still plenty of students that come here with no English. Yes, we call them newcomers, and yeah, no English hardly at all. And so we start from scratch. When families arrive, we got it some families that they would spend six months to come here. The district screens the students to properly place them. It's not only the, the, the academic piece, it's the social emotional piece. It's a big change for not only the students, but parents, too. And we provide something that we call classes para padres. During the six weeks of classes, parents learn financial literacy, how to create a healthy lifestyle, and tools to help their children succeed. What kind of needs do these families have when they first come to the school? A lot of it is just learning the education system. Yeah. Many also lack medical and dental care. So twice a year, the district provides free dental exams and basic cleanings through a partnership with Ready, Set, Smile. They also have a clothing and food shelf available for families. My ultimate goal is making sure every family is taken care of. Homeschool liaison Kevin Centeno says they rely heavily on donations, grants, and community partners. Finding resources that are free or low cost for our families is a big struggle. Is the district equipped to handle this sort of influx of students? That's a great question. Uh, as a public school, uh, we are open to receive all students who come, but the reality is when we serve e English language learners, the state doesn't necessarily provide us all the funds because we're operating at a deficit. Executive Director of Educational Services, Bondo Nyembwe, says if they had the funds, they'd hire more EL teachers. And LEAF in Spanish is what? Oja. 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 Yeah. Very nice. They only have 23 full time. So you guys have your work cut out for we you? We sure do. Yep. Despite funding strains, in 2023, 82.5% of EL students graduated from Columbia Heights School District, nearly 20% more students than the state's average. It's great. I mean, for me, it's, it's the reason that I do this job, and it's my favorite part of the job, is to get to meet kids from all over the world and sort of be the bridge between home and school for them. Henry isn't quite ready for graduation, but he is finding his way in this new place. I have 13, 13 friends. 13 friends? Wow, that's a lot. With photojournalist Jose Pasqual, Kirsten Mitchell, WCCO News. Last session, state lawmakers increased funding for English learners over the next two years. More aid will kick in down the road to deal with the money gap.